aka Anlum, and welcome to my studio. Today is class five of Let's Begin Painting with Acrylics. We're going to be doing a landscape. The last class we did a still life, and this is what we did. You can go see that video right there. If you're new, you can also check out how we mix paints here, right here. Today we're going to be doing a landscape. I decided that we're not going to do a particular picture. I picked three pictures. So, because there's something about each picture I like. So I like the sky here and I like possibly this mountain range. Here, um, I like the barn so that we can have something in the, in the forefront, but I kind of like these mountains too, not sure. And then here, I just wanted um, some trees so I can show uh, Gina how to do trees and not the like reflections are a pain in the butt. I didn't really like the sky or the mountain here, but I really, I really liked this one, but I wanted to make the, the barn smaller and add some trees. So basically what we're doing is we're taking three reference photos and we're going to combine our own composition. All of these photos are linked down in the dibbly do, And we're going to start out using this one. Um, we're going to create a very pale blue sky. All right, so that's how we're going to start today. I didn't pre-mix my paints this time. We are gonna kind of learn on the fly how to mix paints because we're not doing some detail work. I'll back up here. So you need to learn how to mix on the fly because last time we pre-mixed everything and then we applied the paint. Um, today we're going to do some mixing on here on the fly and we're going to do some mixing on the palette or sorry on the canvas as well so you want to get your big flat brush oh i need some uh, paper towel so we got some paper towel i got my reference photo over there i'll try to keep my palette in camera my desk is my desk is so small. All right. So dab, dab, dab. You want, we want a nice light sky. Now, I don't know if you've ever gone outside and looked at the sky, but the sky is always darker straight above you. And as you get down to the horizon, it's lighter. So what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of pre-mix a light blue here not light enough remember that acrylic paints dry a half a shade to a full shade darker so this is a nice blue it'll it will dry a little bit darker so I'm actually going to make it quite pale and to help move this a bit. I'm just going to give this a little bit of a squirt with some water because we want this to move. Because we're going to do some blending on the canvas. So I'm going to take this blue, this nice light blue, and take a little bit of dark and just make a little section here that's a little bit darker. And we're going to blend right on the canvas. Add some more light blue down here, blend, blend here so there's no harsh line. Back and forth like that. That was really quick. I'm gonna zoom in so we can take a look. Here we go. I'm going to have to rearrange my palette again. Here we are. Okay. So this is mildly darker. I want it to be a little bit darker. 
So as long, I'm just going to add some of that dark blue straight in. As long as the paint is still wet, you can blend. I'll add a little darker blue like that. You can add a little bit of white down here. See how you get that nice gradation? So whatever you're comfortable with, you do to get the blue sky that you want. And as you pull down, it mixes with the lighter paint. Cool, eh? I'm just going to add a little bit more white down here. I want this to be a little bit lighter. There we go. That is my sky. That was nice and quick. All right, I'm just smoothing out my paint. So we have a nice little bit, oops, right here. We have a little bit of a darker blue here, a little bit of a lighter blue here, all nicely blended. Perfect. I'm going to back up just two. There we go. Clean your brush. And take your hair dryer or heat gun and dry this. All right. I'm going to put that aside for one second because we need to mix some colors. Now, these are kind of a brownish purple. These ones are definitely kind of a brownish gray. And these ones are brownish gray as well. So we need some browns and we need some grays. Our mountains are not going to look exactly like this. These reference photos are for shapes, mostly. Mostly for shapes. All right. So we're going to mix some browns. And everybody here knows how to mix brown, right? Well, let's start by mixing a little bit of, of a purple. Because I think we're going to do brownish, grayish, purple. Um, put too much blue out there. Um, oh, you can see some water here. I had pre-sprayed some of the paints when I was setting up so they didn't dry out. Needs a little bit more blue. I know sometimes it's hard to see, but that is a very dark purple. I like it. And I'm going to move my mouse out of the way, take some white, and add some white here. So this is kind of a brownish purple. It's a very dark purple. Actually, it might need a little bit more red. Just a tad more red. There we go. So this is a very brownish purple. And we're going to just add a little bit of black to this. And a little bit more white. See how I'm not even really cleaning my palette brush? That's the wonderful thing about color mixing. You can mix any color that you want. Now I kind of have a gray. That's nice. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow over here and a little bit of this brownish purple. And I'm going to get a true brown. When you mix all three primary colors together, you get a true muddy brown, which is awesome. And I'm going to add some white over here and get two different shades of brown. There we go. So I've got a brown, a light brown, a gray, a purpley, and a light purpley. And this is what we're going to use to make our mountains. All right, flip that over, move the palette out of the way. 
bring this back. Oops, that's still a little bit wet. All right, so I like this shape of the mountain. I like this color of the mountain. So more browny gray than this dark purple. Uh, so but I'm, I'm basically looking for the shape. So that's what I'm going to try and accomplish. So got my reference photo, have my nice damp brush. I'm going to take the brown and just scoop it up on the end of my brush. And I'm just going to kind of make a shape. You can play with your shape. You can change your shape. I'm going to add a little bit of purple to that. You can see that there. I, I'm going to do a different color there. So purplish brown, take a bit of the lighter purple. Just, we're not really worried right now about the color. We're just adding colors on. We're going to refine them later. But the more you have mixed in now, the better it'll be later for rocks and stuff. All right. I like that. I also like to dab to give texture, so you can do that too. You can come in, a little bit of dabbing with texture. That's good, that's good. This here in the back, when things are farther away, they have muted colors. So I'm gonna use some of this light purple, and I'm just gonna, I should have done this one first, but I didn't realize till I got down here that that's what I wanted. And that's the wonderful thing about painting, right? So I'm just gonna mix these two together and I'll come back and redo the one in front. So I've got that nice muted purple. I'm gonna make it a little bit more muted with some white, really make it look far away, kind of misty like that. Don't worry about it, we can paint on top. Remember, we like to go from the back, see that? From far away, we move closer. So I changed my mind on the fly. I do it a lot when I'm painting. If, um, if the paint is pulling, just add a little bit of water and it will flow a little bit better. All right, so I have my, my background mountain now. Sorry about that. Uh, I just want to change the shape here a little bit. I want it to be more triangular at the top, like that. That's good, that's nice. All right, now let's go back to the dark brown and the dark purple, put both on the brush and we'll just come down here and we'll just go right over it. like that. See how that pushes this this one into the background? That's how we create perspective with our paintings. All right. Now, we have a shape. This is good. We're going to I'm just going to use some of the the colors that I have. So the stroke that I'm doing right now is just an X like this. So I'm just going to take a bunch of the colors, the brown and the dark purple, and I'm just going to add color to fill in this section here, pretty much to hide the blue. Now that I know where my skyline is, 
This is kind of a medium purplish brown, so we'll still be able to use dark to make our shadows and lights to use uh, for our highlights. But this mix of colors is good because when we come back later, after this is dry, it won't be like a solid color, right? It will be, and all these nice brush strokes going different ways will all turn into rocks when we're done. Make that like that. There. How's that? That's pretty cool. See? Lots of texture. Wash a brush. All right. <clears throat> I know that we jumped in really fast today. I felt bad that um, the other class took two classes and I'm determined to have this one done in a class, in an hour, in one sitting. So I jumped in really quick. Um, if you're new here, please know that Class one, two, three, and four will help you get caught up with color mixing, techniques, shadows, highlights. So I encourage you to go and check that out if you're new here. This needs to be dried. Okay, let's put this aside for a second. We're going to mix some dark green and I'm out of brown and I know I'm going to need some more brown. I know I'm going to. So let's mix some more brown. Uh, I'm going to take what's left of this purple because I don't think I'm going to need much of that. A little bit of yellow. So I'm going to get some more brown, which is good. I'm going to need that for highlighting. If your paints get dry, a little squirt with some water is all, is all good. All right, I need a dark green because the next layer we're going to do is kind of going to be hills in front of the mountains. And as per the norm, I have run out of room on my palette. So I'm going to mix a little bit right here on my craft mat. <laughs> this is a very, very, very dark green, which is fine because that's what I want. I'm going to just put that right here. And I'm going to mix, oops, I'm going to take some white over here. And take a little bit of this back and mix kind of a lighter green. Need some more yellow. There we go. Actually a little bit more yellow. All right. Put that in there. So with your dark green, Mine's really dark, but that's okay because it's far away. So we're going to take some of that dark green, which actually needs a little bit more yellow to it. And we're going to do some hills in front of the mountain. 
don't worry, we're going to come back and make these more look like rocks. We're just looking for some shapes right now. So dark green, a little bit more yellow in there. Too dark, it's too dark. So you can mix on your palette, you can mix on your canvas, you can mix on your craft mat. Basically, I'm looking for a hill. And I don't necessarily want to mirror that shape. I want like a different a different shape I don't want it to look like I'm doing another hill this way and another hill this way you wanna you want to not make it look symmetrical that's what I'm trying to say I'm just gonna smooth this out a bit and take a look at my shape and see if I like my shape. There. See, now that makes it look like that mountain goes behind this hill. Now, I'm going to use the rest of that green to cover up the rest of the canvas. So you can use like the little X stroke like this, or you can go back and forth, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, I'm just gonna add a little, a little bit more yellow down here because I want it to be lighter down here. You could also add in white if you wanted, whatever you want. Down here a little bit more yellowish white. But I do want to use up not all the green because we're going to use it for some trees as well and some shadows. But what we're looking for here is just coverage now that we have shapes. And I'm just going to go back and forth so my brush strokes, if they show in the background, will look like grass. How's that? And wash the brush. So this is where we're at. Look at that. We have our blue sky. We have a far mountain. We have a mid-range mountain. We have a hill that we're going to come back and add some detail to. And we have kind of a grassy plain. This is the background. Don't worry about it. I know grass isn't that dark. But that's what we have. So this has to dry thoroughly. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera off, let this dry for a couple of hours, and then I will come back and we will continue. Okay, we're back. This is dry and I decided I do not like the shape of my hills, which you know, for me is normal. It just, it looks too wavy. I didn't like it. So I'm going to go and take some of the dark green, uh, right here. I think I'm going to just make this one hill here. I think that was part of the problem. Right there. Um, this can be intimidating. Don't worry about it. Because if you really hated it, kind of like I'm really hating it right now, you can uh, dry it, do brown over it, and then come back. I'm going to see if I can... give myself a different shape that I like. I'm thinking that this is going to work. This happens a lot with me. It dries, I look at it and I go, nah, I don't really like it. I think, I think that's a little bit better. Don't worry about it too much because we're gonna we're gonna put some uh, 
kind of tree-ish shapes, bushish shapes. Okay, so that I like. This I'm not keen on. I'm gonna round that over a bit. I mean, this is all a part of, I mean, this is one of the reasons why you use reference photos, right? So that you can copy a thing, but it's nice to be able to make your own compositions as well. Especially if you're using reference photos from the internet, you don't want to be like, it doesn't matter if you're practicing, if you're going to use a photographer's work while you're, um, while you're practicing, it's if you try to sell the piece afterwards, you don't want to be using someone else's image and then selling your piece. Practicing, no problem. All right, I like that shape better. I'll wash that brush off. We are going to go back now and work on the background a little bit while this is drying. Wash off my brush, let that dry. I'm gonna get my filbert brush, make that damp, dab, dab. Okay, we are going to assume that the sun is coming from this way. So we can, let me zoom in right onto this. back here. Okay, this mountain right here. So if the light is coming this way, we can take a bit of that darker purple and we can put the back in shadow. Like this. So this makes it look like that's the back of the mountain. And then we can make some shapes here. Here especially we can make this look like it is the back of this peak as well. I need a little bit thicker paint. I'm going to like that. So that looks like it's the back of that peak. Like that. I just need a little bit more. I'm going to add some brown to that. I'm just dabbing it in. I had added some water to my palette so my paints wouldn't dry out and I'm finding they're a little bit thin, they're not sticking. So there we go. Do you see how that gives the illusion now of rocks and depth? I'm just gonna go like that. Pretty cool, right? We can do that over here too. Oops, you can't see anymore. <laughs> Let me zoom out. All right, so I'm going to take some of the brown, add a little bit of black into it, and I'm just going to create the illusion of cragginess here. Like this, this is in shadow here. We'll come back. It's all about the layers, remember? Like that. All right. Now I'm going to take that dark and I'm just I'm just dabbing. I'm turning the brush like this 
and I'm randomly just dabbing and you want to make like small marks because it's far away just to give a little bit of kind of that hill and right in here I'm gonna make it look dark and craggy behind this here just a few random kind of looks like rocks don't worry about it too much see that I know over here looks a little bit let's take some of the light brown and now we're gonna highlight the front of the rocks see this is a shadow this here is what the Sun is reflecting off of and it's a light brown there's no yellow up there we can use a little bit of the light purple if you want but I think I'm gonna stick with the light brown on this one I'm gonna use a light purple on that one and you just want to you can see where the Sun is hitting the rocks and again it's just like really light dabs we're just see how it changes the whole perspective of that flat grayness and now we have just a little bit of light now that's showing right in here and this just makes it looks like there's there's a rock face some parts you can see are facing the Sun and others and as you go down this way make your marks a little bit smaller they can be different colors There, like that. I'm going to wash that out. Now I'm going to come back with the light purple that we made. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Actually, the light purple, I'm going to add a little bit more white to a little pile of this. And we're just going to. This is the face of the mountain that's not light enough a little bit more white just a little bit right along here very small marks now we're gonna come back and we're gonna add more shadows later we just I think that if I give you this right now and now you can see the difference right away it will make it easier for you to understand what we're doing just little dabs, little tiny dabs. Clean the brush. Now, this hill, I made way too dark. But that's okay, this is gonna be in shadow. We're not gonna have to do anything. I'm gonna take the light green that you made and I'm going to go over, leave the dark part. We can't get much darker than that. Just make some nice light shapes 
on this side. We're going to come back and actually highlight it a little bit more. But for right now, I want this to be dark. Just a second. I want this in here to be really dark. Because I don't want my mountains all to look like they're the same way. So here, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of this light. I'm going to add more yellow to it. Oh, you can't see that. Sorry. I took some of the light green. I added yellow to it to really lighten it up. I'm going to add a little bit of the dark green. So it's kind of a medium green. And I'm actually going to come in here and go over what I just did here. This is too light. I know. Go like this because this is what I want to do. I want this part to be the lighter green so that I can put the dark green over it. This is what I'm doing. We will come back and highlight in a minute. But I need this to be a, a lighter green. And that's part of the issue, right? Is if you go too dark. Okay, this is better. Okay, this is much better. So again, I'm going to leave this part dark here. Just kind of blend this in a bit. We will come back. There's going to be trees and bushes on here anyways, but I need that to be lighter. And I'm actually going to make this in the background lighter too. There we go, like that. Okay, now come back with the dark green because this is the back part of that next hill that's going to be in shadow. And now we'll be able to define that this one is in front of these other two. Do you know what I mean? And again, we're, we're going to be painting over this. This is pretty much where the, uh, this is where the barn is going to go. There. And that's the beautiful thing about changing your mind is I think that this is going to give it more character because this puts it way in the front and that then pushes that one back. And again, we're gonna add texture, we're gonna add um, some trees and some bushes and it's not gonna just look like a hill of grass. All right. Now, we need to go back, we need to go back to our rocks while this is drying in the foreground. So I'm going to zoom in again. I'm going to get some of that dark brown. Oh, I'm out of dark brown. I'm going to have to mix some more dark brown. So. There's a few things here I don't like. Oops. Okay, this here. I 
I'm going to change this peak here a little bit. It's okay. Don't worry about it. So just don't like the way it looked. So I'm just going to darken that up a bit. Let that dry. We're going to come back and highlight that. I like this one back here. Now we're going to mix a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. So we're looking for a very, very pale yellow. We're looking for a highlight that has a bit of sunshine in it. That's it. Like really pale. Just a little bit of sunshine, like really, really pale. Okay, this is what's going to get dabbed right on the part that gets the sunlight, just like a tad. So up here. Because everything underneath is a brown or a, a light brown just the smallest amount of the yellowish white just to give it that last not everywhere just a few places right where the Sun is actually going to hit just right on the edge of the mountain. Just a tad. A tad! I'm the worst offender for tads. I do a tad and it's like, oh, I'm going to do another tad. No, don't. All right. I do a little bit up here. And here, because that will really break up that peak. Now I want to go back to the light brown and mix that in. Because this is places where it's getting sunlight, but not directly sunlight. It's breaking up some of the rocks. So it's still at the edge of the mountain. Now here, I'm going to pull down from the brown edge and it's going to make it look like an escarpment, like it's falling, that it's coming straight down off the mountain. See that? That gives it a little bit of drama. And I want to take some of the dark brown and the gray. And I just want to, oh, not dark enough. Maybe some black. And just, nope, don't like that. Okay. Changed my mind. Don't like it. Let's see if I can wipe that off. All right, I like that. So what I'm going to do is go back to that and really pull. Even though I'm going over my my uh, hill, don't worry about it. That's going to make it look. pulling a little bit more, that that escarpment is going to go behind that hill. Like that. Now there's a little bit of light back here, not much. 
little bit, it just makes it look like it's not a flat surface. Like that. Got escarpment coming down. A little bit of brown in here. Make it look craggy. Needs to be a bit darker. I need some water, it's not flowing. A little bit of black. I have run out of brown again. And take that light brown and just Now, while I have some of that dark brown, I'm just going to go over here and add, just because this is way far away, we're just adding a little bit of texture, make it look like there's some rocks. Let's back that up so you can get a better picture. These white dots here are too much the same. I think they're too um, they don't look random enough. So I'm just going to break those up with a little bit of black. There we go. And again, yours is going to look different than mine. We'll come back and fix that in a second. All right. Break that up there a bit. A little bit of this light brown. And I want, I'm just taking a tad of black, just very lightly going over the back of that. Oops, black, not, I don't like using pure black very often, but just this needs to look really dark back here. I'm just dabbing. So the purple is still showing through. Wash my brush. All right. The dark green over the escarpment. Too much water in my brush. Just following the line that was already there. How's that? Pushes that back. Makes it looks like it drops off. All right. Now, this green. We need some other greens. We need, we need to mix some yellow in here. And some of the dark green. I think we're pretty much done with the dark green. Leave a little bit just in case. So here's what we're going to do. 
Now I normally don't use a filbert brush for what I'm going to do. I usually use a very thick bristle brush, but it didn't come in Gina's kit. So I don't want her to have to go out, but if you want to go out and get a fan brush and a scrubby brush, so these are instead of the Taclon bristles, these are, well, they're not real bristles, but they're stiff bristles. This will give you a better look. Um, however, I didn't want Gina to have to go out, so we are going to, well, we're not going to use the filbert, sorry, we're going to use the large shaper. We're going to pretend that this is a bristle brush. And we're going to mix the dark green. So on the brush, we're going to put light green and the dark green and a little bit of yellow so that all of the colors are on it. And we're just going to very randomly on the edge here, we're going to mostly dark, a little bit of light. We're just going to try and make it looks like there's trees and bushes here. So it's not a straight line anymore. If you have a bristle brush, you do the same thing. You just do that. All right. But we're going to use the sh the large shader brush. So dark green, light green, a little bit of yellow. Put it all on the brush and just randomly dab at the edge. I need more dark. Obviously we want more dark on this side. So we just want it to look like far away bushes and trees. And in the front, oops, we're going to put more of the light here and we're going to mix in the dark to make it look like there's shadows. this side. Now I'm going to let this dry in between because I don't have a good scrubby brush. The colors are mixing a little bit. But again we want to put the dark on one side with a little bit of light and more light on the front with a little bit of dark. So this side of the hill looks like it's in sunlight with a little bit of dark in for shadows. And how's that? And then in the back, we want mostly dark with just a little bit of light. And we're going to come back once this is dry. But that's basically what I want you to do. I want you to mostly light on this side, mostly dark on that side. And if you do it up and down this way, it will make it look more like trees. Oops, see that's too much. Where's my medium? There we go. We'll, we can, you can always come back. 
You just have to wait for it to dry. All right. The important thing is that you're understanding that light is on the right and shadow is on the left because it's behind the hill. I'm actually going to take just a little bit of black and just like that. See how that looks like far away trees? That's what we're looking for. And I'm going to put some light here. I, that, that yellow is too buttery. I want I want a more of a yellow green. There we go. And then down here, just a little bit of sparkle where the sun would hit it. So you kind of get the idea, I'm sure. You want a little bit of some taller trees. Now the barn's going to go over here and we are going to come back and um, highlight this a bit and do a little bit more shadow but it needs to dry because the colors are kind of mixing which is fine I mean that's okay but we want to be able to make little marks as well there we go um, that don't mix that sit on top especially with the highlight there 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 especially with the dark I'm not getting the dark that I want I'm, I'm actually holding it in my hand so that I can see I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, just a tad of black to that dark green just a little bit because over here I really want it to be much darker. But you see how the green in the background it shows through so it kind of makes it look like it's grass in between. Just like a little bit. See now this looks like it's a little bit deeper into the forest. And again you're holding your brush up like this so you're kind of getting um, like a trunk line. It's a way of kind of faking it with it if you don't have the uh, scrubby brush or the fan brush just a little bit like this okay now when this dries we'll be able to see where it needs more different colors of green but just right up here I need it to be able to show against that mountain in the background that just I'll come back and put more green green here but I have to be able to differentiate between the mountain behind it and the hill in front just a little tops of the trees there get some of this medium green that we made yeah I'll come in with a little bit more yellow later see how here it makes it look like there's the forest in front of that other hill back there which I'm going to come back and highlight all right, so you get the idea. Sorry, this part was a little bit long. I wasn't getting 
the results that I wanted. But you can play with it, play with a bunch of different colors of green. Play with a, a little bit of yellow, maybe. Not all trees are necessarily green. And if you just randomly put it in, when you, when you hold it back from you, it just... It makes it look random. There, like that. Okay. Let's let that dry. And then we're going to come in and we're going to do the barn. We're going to do the barn here. The wonderful thing about this, and artists are never done, right? I will frig with this for quite some time because that's just, that's the kind of artist I am. I'm like, oh, I guess I could just get that other color, that other color. I'm actually, you know what? I'm just going to add a little bit of blue to one of these greens and just... Get a little bit of, you know how sometimes shadows are kind of a bluish purple? Just add a little bit of red, a little bit of blue to some of that dark green, which I'm now officially out of. <laughs> you just keep mixing colors together until you get something... You'd be surprised how, like how many colors you can add in and get like this has kind of a, almost a purpley pink hue to it which is fine I need more black I don't really want black I really want brown there we go brown brown and black and just come in here This is making the video really long. I'm sorry. I should have fast forwarded through this, but I was talking, so now I can't. <laughs> but this is the fun part. This is the fun part. Okay, stop. 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 Okay, I need some white, like a nice light gray. Could be birch trees, right? Just a few, just little dabs. Stop, I gotta stop, I have to stop, I must stop. This is one of the hardest things for me is to stop. Okay, stop. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So we're going to let this dry and we're going to come back and we're going to tweak here and here and we're going to put the barn here and then do some final last things. Okay. Uh, because that took up so much time. And again, I apologize because I would fast forward through it except that I'm talking through the entire thing. I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Uh, with a smaller, with the smaller shader, and it's I'm going to make grass. So that's going to be in fast forward. So I'm doing the exact same thing right in here, okay, in fast forward. So I made myself some more green. And... I'm going to add yellow to this and white and make just very short little grass type strokes along here. All right, and fast forward.
What I think I'm going to do for next class is we're going to talk about additional supplies and additional color mixing before we go on to our next project because I think some of the information I can give you now will make more sense and you will understand it better. So I think that's what we're going to do next class. We're going to expand on the supplies and the color mixing of the first two classes so that we can prepare to do uh, another piece. But there's information that I think I need to share with you about those two subjects. So how about we do that and then people who want to go out and get other products they can and those who don't don't have to but at least they'll know how to use them all right I'm going back to fast forward The barn is going to go right here. The focal point was supposed to be the barn. That's not happening now. <laughs> I wanted it to be a nice big barn. It's not going to be. It's going to be a small barn because we have run out of time. So I'm just going to get, I'm just using the red because I have some on my palette left over from making the purple. This will just be, um, we'll put some brown and some white over it. So basically we're going to start with the triangle. That's this part of the roof. And then we're going to come down and do this part here. I am not happy with this. It's because I'm getting to the end of the video and I'm starting to stress out because it's too, the video is too long. So what we're going to do is don't paint that. I'm going to wipe this off. We're not going to do the barn. We'll do another landscape and we'll do the barn in the future. I'm just mushing that in. I'm going to come back and we're going to just, this is just going to be a landscape. So we're going to add another layer of, of a hill in front here with some light and some dark. And some greens and it's going to be there's nothing in the foreground this is just going to be a really far away panoramic so we're gonna to have to do another landscape but before we do that landscape I'm gonna to talk to you about color mixing some more I am I'm struggling a bit with the um, the colors that we can make with the basics that we have. But again, I wanted my niece to be able to go to Michael's and only pick up a few colors so that she would be able to do the course. And I have found that I can't mix because I'm used to having a gazillion colors around the mix. 
because you can't mix every single green with one color of yellow and one color of blue and that's what I'm going to show you at the, in the next class is that I can get these lovely olive greens but I can't get a nice bright green with the blue because I have a very dark blue so I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna show you next class we're not gonna do a painting we're going to experiment with different colors that's what we're gonna do I'm just gonna get a little bit more yellow out here so this is actually going to end up just being what it is a foresty mountain view and I kind of apologize that we didn't get what I originally said we were gonna get but that's again there's two parts to this one this is not my forte we've talked about that before how I'm a real um, not a realism I'm an impressionistic painter and again we have a very limited palette with these limited colors but I think it's good that I make mistakes along with you because then you figure out that it's not a disaster you can with limited brushes limited colors and limited uh, techniques you can still get something nice like I mean I love this this is fantastic you can really tell that the light is coming over there so I'm just gonna go back and forth I'm using the brown so I'm basically just doing a modeled uh, light brown to get a little bit of uh, contrast just like very light here and the dark bluish green and we'll put in a little bit of yellow and that's how we're going to finish this one Again, that's not a horrible painting. I probably should have done this one first instead of the still life. And for that I apologize. Again, I'm learning just like you are. So you can continue to do this as much as you want. I would say use your lightest colors just a little bit to sparkle stuff and use your medium and darks to create texture there in the background don't let anything get too dark or too light there we go I'm going to sign that and you can't even see that <laughs> All right, the very basics of landscape. We are going to redo this painting after next class where we talk about some of the challenges that we have. All right, so again, didn't turn out too bad. It's good for a first effort. I think we learned a lot. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you can follow me on my artful learning journey. <laughs> I hope that Gina has fun with this. Um, there's a lot of opportunity to play and just um, work your brush, work your colors, work a little bit of technique 
And yes, I promise when we get to the next video, we're going to talk about some of the problems we had with this one and how we're going to overcome them. I'll talk to you later. Bye.